Mr. Speaker, it is great to see you, my colleague from New England, presiding in the chair today at this historic moment. You are always going to have a permanent place in the history of our country. You are a great leader and an inspiration to all of us. Uh, and uh, everything that we are doing today is inspired by your incredible personal courage. With the incredible example that your service to the House is providing, I am confident that you will not be the last who will sit up there and preside. Uh, but only the first in a long line. Now, since I introduced the legislation before us today, we have engaged in a bipartisan, extensive, and constructive process with stakeholders to find common ground on the legislative language and to move forward with this bill. I want to thank the leadership of Chairman Henry Waxman, without whom we would not be here today, Rick Boucher, who worked over the last year to construct this legislation before us, to Cliff Stearns from Florida, who worked in a bipartisan fashion to craft this historic legislation, which we are about to consider, to Joe Barton from Texas, who ensured that from the very beginning this would be a bipartisan effort that we would put together in order to pass the historic legislation that is today before us. I would like to think that Helen Keller and Annie Sullivan are looking down on us here this afternoon and that they are smiling. This picture of the two of them was taken in 1888 in Brewster, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. I am so proud to have the Perkins School for the Blind where Annie Sullivan graduated and Helen Keller was educated in my congressional district in Watertown, Massachusetts. When they met 122 years ago, they were a stunning study in contrast. Alabama and Massachusetts, a daughter of the South, a young woman of Irish descent traveling south from Boston. Nevertheless, they changed the world together, these two miracle workers. They shattered expectations about what a person who was deaf or blind could achieve. Now, I am an American of Irish heritage from Boston, and my mother was a Sullivan and she always told me that her relatives were a particularly smart and determined lot. But I can only imagine the bottomless resolve and resilience Annie Sullivan must have needed to navigate her way in the South in the aftermath of the Civil War. Whether it was a Braille reader or a broadband connection, access to technology is not a political issue. It is a participation issue. Each of us should be able to participate in the world to the fullest extent possible, and the latest communications and video services and devices can enrich and ennoble how Americans experience and enjoy their lives. We're debating this bill today on the 20th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act which the first President George Bush signed into law, underscoring the nonpartisan nature of this vital issue. The 20th anniversary is an opportunity to look back and to reflect on the progress which we have made. Coming out of the Energy and Commerce Committee's Telecommunications Subcommittee over the last two decades have been a whole series of legislative initiatives aimed at broadening the disabled community's access to technologies that can help them do things that most Americans take for granted. In 1990, we made sure that Americans who are deaf could make telephone calls. 
In 1990, we mandated that television shows be closed captioned for the deaf so that they can enjoy the same entertainment and other programming as other Americans. Many deaf and hard of hearing people say that closed captioning is the single modern accessibility technology that has changed their lives the most. And in 1996, we inserted language which required accessibility of all telephone equipment, including telephones, telephone calls, call waiting, speed dialing, call ID, and related services all be accessible. Two decades ago, Americans with disabilities couldn't get around if buildings weren't wheelchair accessible. Today, they can't get around without being web accessible. That's what we're talking about here today. 